All right, next up, I want to talk about uh, how you can plot 2D arrays of data, um, or in other words, how you can plot images. Okay, so there are different functions in matplotlib which allow you to plot two-dimensional data, and uh, we'll cover two of them for now. And um, just keep in mind that there are more um, which might be useful in different cases. We'll cover imshow and scatter, and uh, imshow will be used to yeah, show images, as the name suggests, and scatter will create scatter plots. So, uh, yeah, different dots uh, will represent uh, data points in a certain uh, two dimensional space. And um, some more functions uh, or functions to plot um, would be p color or p color mesh, uh, which can be used to draw image data or um, yeah, two dimensional array data. Um, in a non-rectangular grid, so basically kind of warped images, um, you can imagine it in that way. And uh, there's also MetShow, which is very similar to ImShow, but it just has some different defaults. Uh, for example, it just um, yeah, creates different tick values, uh, which makes sense for matrices. Um, and as MetShow suggests, um, this can be used to yeah, plot the values of matrices. So um, and colorize the matrices basically based on their values. Um, all of these functions will return scalar mappables and these scalar mappables are again artists and um, as we've seen before with the line artists and the rectangular, uh, rectangular artists, uh, these have different functions uh, which can be used to modify the looks and the behavior of, of these objects. I want to start with Imishow and um, first of that First of all, um, for that, we want to create a 2D array, which we can plot. And here we just create um, yeah, a two-dimensional A range, um, as you should already know how that works. And then we call uh, x.imshow and pass our two-dimensional array. And uh, simple as that, we can plot an image. And um, well, images are basically as simple as just having two-dimensional um, arrays with pixel values inside. Some images, um, especially images with color values, um, are a little more complex. They might have three dimensions. Um, so they have two dimensions for the width and the height, and then one dimension for the uh, different color channels, uh, which are usually um, red, green, and blue. And uh, yeah, sometimes also an alpha channel. Um, and Matplotlib also supports that. So Array2D could also have been a three-dimensional array and um, with three color channels, it would already have uh, picked uh, red, green, and blue as the corresponding uh, yeah, colors to display. But if we just have a two-dimensional array, um, what you will notice is that it, yeah, it assigns these weird colors here, and these colors come from a certain color map. And this color map is used to look up which color a certain value should have based on um, yeah, how large the values in the data are. And uh, if we don't specify anything else, it will just use the minimum of our data as yeah, the minimum in the color map and the maximum in our data as the maximum in the color map. And um, yeah, we'll talk about color maps in more detail later on. But for now, uh, just know that if you just provide a two-dimensional array to Imshow, then it will uh, automatically assign this color map here. Okay, and um, we can also use Imshow, for example, to just um, plot arbitrary images that we um, have laying around. And here we just um, read in one image uh, that is in the images folder. And uh, the image is called rocket.png. And plt read will take this path and just load this PNG file as, a, uh, as an array. And then we can, can use imshow to plot this uh, image of a rocket. And then you'll also notice is that this doesn't have any axis. Um, and above here, this had these uh, tick labels and these lines around them, but this doesn't anymore. And this is because we called x.axis and passed off. And this axis um, corresponds to these lines and these ticks. And this function will just say that, um, yeah, we don't want any of that, turn that off. So, and, and that's why we pass the string off. There are also different options that you, uh, that you can pass to axis. Uh, which we'll call, uh, also cover later on in this lecture. Okay, and uh, just very quick, 
as I already mentioned, the match show um, is just a different uh, yeah, default of im show. And um, here we just assigned um, integers to the different um, rows and columns with zero and ze uh, zero being the top left. And uh, here um, we had uh, the zero row at the top here. And um, this was just um, yeah, the tick labels on different sides of the plot. And here for this im show, it also it created these uh, ticks in between. So we have these 0.5 and 1.5 and so on, um, which might not be that useful for images because we're dealing with uh, discrete pixels. All right. Now, as I've already talked about color bars a bit, um, now I want to show you how you can actually create them. And this is by calling fig.colorbar and passing the artist that was returned by the imp show. And here notice that uh, we call this on the figure object and not on the axis or PLT. And this is because um, this will actually create a new subplot automatically and um, basically link our image um, returned by imp show to this new axis uh, which displays the color bar. And it will take some space away from our image um, but this is just um, yeah, this is just the way that works. Uh, we can also uh, do it differently. I'll show that down here. Um, if you don't want your color bar to take any space away from your image, but for now this will just create a color bar next to our uh, image here, and it shows you um, yeah which color corresponds to which value. And uh, as we saw above here, it used um, the minimum and maximum from our data to map that to the color bar and um, the A range, which was up here, uh, is from 0 to 8. And this color bar now shows that this purple color is 0 and this yellow is 8. And this is just um, yeah, the mapping that Matplotlib automatically created for our data here. And yeah, um, again, this is just the, the data. So you can see the minimum um, 0 was the purple and the eight, the maximum was yellow. Okay, and now, as I said, uh, if you want your color map to be inside of your image so that it doesn't remove any space um, inside the figure, then you can uh, pass the CX argument to color bar. And um, otherwise, this is very similar. We again call fig.colorbar and pass our image, and then we say CX. Um, yeah, is uh, equal to this uh, CX, which we created up here. And CX is just a new axis object that we uh, created at this certain position here. And um, yeah, this is another way to create axis. And in this case, we created an axis and not a subplot because this axis is now not in this grid anymore, but we can uh, position it freely inside our uh, figure. And uh, we use the CX um, to now plot this color bar. And we also say that the orientation should be horizontal. So um, not as uh, the default here, which uh, is a vertical color bar. Now it should be horizontal. And as you can see here, this just created uh, this horizontal color bar, which is inside our um, original artist. And uh, yeah, for this example, this probably doesn't make too much sense to have this color bar right in here, but there definitely are examples where you want your color bar to be included in the original plot uh, so, it, so that it doesn't take away any um, additional space in your figure. All right, um, now there are different uh, parameters that you can pass to the imshow, color mesh, uh, or contour and scatter um, functions and so on, which all work on uh, two-dimensional data. And uh, these are um, yeah, standardized for these different functions so that you can understand um, the different functions if you know how to work with one of them. The first parameter here we want to cover is the CMAP. And CMAP is just uh, the name or actually a color map uh, object that uh, should be used to create a color map for a certain uh, plot. And um, I'll cover different color maps later on. Just uh, yeah. now for now that Matplotlib by default already includes lots of different color maps uh, which can be used in very different, um, yeah, for different uh, things. And um, this is very useful to create 
different looking plots and uh, actually have a meaningful colorization of different data. Okay, then the second and third arguments are the vmin and the vmax. And these just um, tell Matplotlib what the uh, minimum and the maximum value should be of the color bar. And if you leave them out, it will just use the minimum and maximum of the data. But if you specify these, um, it will use uh, these values as the minimum and maximum. And uh, these can be outside of your uh, data range, but they can also be inside. And if they're inside, then everything that is uh, all of your data that is outside of this vmin to vmax range will just be clipped to um, yeah, vmin and vmax so that um, yeah, they're still displayable using the color map that you chose. Okay, and then uh, the third, the fourth parameter here is norm, and uh, norm will just um, yeah specify how the normalization should work for the color map, and uh, by default this will be linear, but um, yeah you can also choose different normalization functions, um, like for example log norm or power norm, which uh, yeah create a logarithmic norm um, or a exponenti exponentiation norm. Um, respectively. Okay, um, now here we want to uh, show an example where we create, uh, where we load some data here and um, this data just comes from um, this sample data in the matplotlib uh, library and um, yeah this is a two-dimensional bivariate normal you don't really have to know what that means but um, yeah it's just a two-dimensional map with uh, two normal distributions um, on them. And we want to visualize this. And for that, we can use the imshow function and pass our data. We already know data is a two-dimensional array, so this will work. And then we set this uh, color map here, and we set it to seismic. And seismic is just the name of one color map that is included in matplotlib. And um, yeah, it's very useful to show um, negative and positive data. Uh, which has like kind of a default at zero. And um, yeah, then as we've done before, we'll just add the color bar using fig.colorbar. And here you can see this is our uh, bivariate normal distribution. And uh, here we have one normal and here's the other. And um, yeah, they're just partly overlaid. And uh, this one down here, this has negative values as you can see on this color map. And the other one here has positive values um, and yeah, this is how we would uh, visualize such a two-dimensional uh, statistical distribution. But um, as you already noticed that um, these values around these normal distributions are kind of reddish. And we don't want them to be red because um, these should be the default case. And as you can see here on this uh, color map, default looks like it should be white. So our zero values should be white and not this red uh, color and this is where the vmin and the vmax arguments come in and we can specify um, yeah, what the minimum and the maximum um, values in the color map should be and we can do that such that the zero value should be in the middle and um, for that we can just set the vmin to minus two and the vmax to two and um, using that we'll automatically have zero in the middle of these two numbers so the average of these two numbers is zero, meaning that the middle of the color map will be um, mapped to the number zero. And now if we do this, you can see that we have our normal distribution again, but now um, the zero outside the two normals um, yeah, is mapped to the white color, which makes more sense uh, in this case, because we want to have this kind of default uh, where nothing happened um, to be white. Okay, now um, coming from imshow to scatter. And what scatter does is create um, a two-dimensional plot of data where we can map two different variables against each other and um, show how uh, one yeah, variable relates to the other. Okay, and for that, we can um, yeah, just call the x.scatter function and we have to pass some data to it. We've created the data up here so we have x1, x2, x3, and y. And x and y, uh, so x1 and y will be used to um, actually draw the scatter points. And x2 and x3, um, I'll talk about 
after that. And uh, if we just show this, you can see this is uh, yeah, pretty normal scatter plot where we have um, X values um, and Y values. We also have a color bar, which we added here. And um, yeah, we even have different scaling for uh, these points. And um, yeah, we also have different colors, um, which are specified by the color map here. And uh, this was all done using these parameters here in the scatter function. And as you can see, uh, we have these four uh, arguments here, which are each assigned an array. And these arrays were created up here. And um, what this means is, um, first of all, the X and the Y, these are the uh, positions. So X just corresponds to the X position here, Y, of course, to the Y position. And then we have these S and C parameters left. And uh, uh, what S does is, is just um, set the scale or the size of these points. And uh, we do this by just uh, taking these uh, random values and multiplying them by 50. And uh, yeah, by that, we just get these uh, this variation in the size of the um, of the points here, and the color the C um, is set by this third um, x value x array, which are again random values, um, which specify just like a value on this color map, and the color map then maps this value to a certain color. And then finally, we have a last parameter here, which is marker. And this will just tell Matplotlib uh, what kind of a marker it should show for each point, for each data point. And uh, we've just set this to an O. And uh, what this does is just create a filled circle. Um, there are lots of different markers in Matplotlib. I'll talk about uh, different kinds of markers later on as well. And uh, here's also a link to the Matplotlib um, documentation with just a big list of different markers. Um, yeah, this is quite useful. Just one example of a different marker would be an X, for example. We have the same um, example again, but now we just added a second called the scatter and um, just set this a marker to X and the first one to dot. And dot is very similar to the O, but just create smaller points. And X will, yeah, as you probably already guessed, we just plot axes. And this is very useful to uh, for example, show the distribution of two different classes um, which have the uh, same kind of variables in them.